Hi, everybody. We want to talk today with uh, Margie Cotrill, is one of our volunteers who experienced being with us for a whole year. So how are you, Margie? Welcome to our program. Um, thank you. I'm doing really great. <laughs> nice. Hey, tell us, first of all, how did you really got to think about becoming a volunteer? Um, it had been doing mission work, doing service work, had been encouraged by my family and for my older siblings. But um, in my senior year in high school, I wanted to do something different, something that would really make an impact. And um, I just was really drawn to service work. And I found the Salesians and <laughs> the rest is history, kind of. So that is good. Uh, so you actually went uh, to the Catholic Network Volunteers, is that right? And then you found our mm, name. Catholic Volunteer Network, yep. And actually, the Salesians were the first site that I found. And I watched the videos and read all about them. And I was like, these people seem awesome, yeah. What grabbed your uh, attention about the our program? Um, everybody was so joyful. Everybody was really joyful that I could see and reading what was written there and the pictures and the videos and everything. I was like, wow, they seem to really love what they're doing. Um, and so just on fire and excited just about life and everything. So I was like, that, that looks like a really great program. Yeah. Perfect. But in a sense, we, we, you, you got attracted to the working with young people. That is what attracted you the most. I remember when we talked mm -hmm. the first time, that is something that, that for you was extremely important. Is that right? Yes. Yes. So, you took one gap year. That means that you finished high school and you did one year of work. So after mm -hmm. you uh, you filled out the application, how did you feel? Were you nervous? You you didn't want to do it? You got cold feet? I mean, what happened? Um, I didn't really have cold feet. I just felt a lot of trust in God that I was supposed to do service work and then that I was supposed to do service work with the Salesians. So... I didn't really get cold feet about that. I just was really excited and hopeful that it would work out, that I would be able to come and work with all of you because, like I said, yeah, working with kids was what I was drawn to. Perfect. And now the other thing is you grab you you got the you got in the airplane, you flew from your town city to Los Angeles, and then uh, we picked you up, and then you went you were dropped off in a convent. Tell us how is to live in a convent with nuns. Um, I think people forget that nuns are regular people too, you know, they're human beings, they're not perfect. Um, it was really amazing. All the sisters that I lived with, I had a different and special relationship with each one of them. And it was great to have people to guide me who had given their life to doing this work. So if I ever had any questions or concerns or anything, they could always help me. And being able to hear their stories was amazing. Um, and yeah, it was just so beautiful to be a part of their community life and doing prayer with them. And yeah, just having someone who really understood what I was going through and could guide me through it. How is a normal day be living with the, with the nuns and then working? I mean, how was your normal day? Um, we would get up early in the morning and would be in the chapel by 6 a.m. to pray um, the liturgy of the hours. And then we would have mass. And then after mass, we would have breakfast together and get ready for school, which started at 745. And so I would be in the classroom from about 745 a.m. to 1 p.m. with pre-K and kindergarten students working as a teacher's aide, which was so much fun. Oh, my goodness. It took a lot of patience. I grew in patience a lot, <laughs> but it was so amazing. And then from about 2 to 6, 630, I was at the Solution Family Youth Center, um, working with middle schoolers and the other kids there, um, doing homework and playing, being together, yeah. You also help yeah. in confirmation programs, is that right? Oh yeah, um, on Wednesday nights, I helped with their confirmation program with the high schoolers. And then on Thursdays, we put on um, a leadership program for the same confirmation kids. And that was really awesome too. I love the leadership program. <laughs> nice. What is something that you learned from this year that you were committed to serve others? Um, I think that just God is going to use you wherever you're at. Um, whatever things I struggled with, I was able to grow through them. All 
the talents that I had that I didn't think I was going to use, I did end up using. And then just how in random moments of the day, even difficult ones, I just got this huge sense of just being so overwhelmed by God's blessings and goodness. Like I literally could not stop smiling because I was like, it is such a gift to be here and to be with these people. And so it's not something I expected always to experience God in the ways that I did, but I was pretty much always experiencing God's presence. Yeah. Nice. What is something that you like the most about the experience? Um, I think being able to work with understanding adults too was really great. Like JC and other people I worked with at the center, um, people who would treat me like an adult, like even though I was a volunteer, I had a say in what I was doing. I really like that. And just people who were excited to be there, who were really committed. You know, it's like everyone was there because I wanted to be. And that already brought us so much closer than if it was a different circumstance. Yeah. Nice. That Salesian joy is a real thing. <laughs> nice. What is something that you dislike about the volunteer experience? Um, sometimes it was tough. What I struggled with personally was switching from being at school to being with the middle schoolers and then high schoolers after that sometimes, um, switching with age groups, because when you're with one age group for a while, you get in a rhythm of things and then to switch groups can be hard because you have to switch how you're thinking, how you're acting a little bit and responding to those kids, um, because each group has different needs as each child has different needs. Um, and so that was something I struggled with a little bit, doing both or multiple in one day. So I don't know. That was, I guess I would say, I would say that's what that, that's actually, I didn't like as much. That's actually really interesting. But yet, what did you learn from that from that transition from one group to another one? What Now, for example, that you have been out of the missions for a couple months, what you, if you go back, what did you learn from the, those those transitions? I think it really challenged me to try and be present to the people that I was with instead of thinking about what I was going to be doing in the upcoming time or with the up next group of kids, just to really be paying attention to the kids that were in front of me and the people around me, the adults, everyone. Um, yeah, not to worry about what was going to happen in the future, I think. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> so it's interesting because even though it was difficult to deal with and the transition, yet you have learned so much from that difficulty that you live. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it really gave me a lot of great tools to, again, stay present, not even just even letting my mind wander, getting lost in thought to know, draw myself back in and be paying attention to what was being said or what was going on. Nice. Do you have any story, kind of like a nice story that you can share with us, with any of the young people or children that you work with? Um, something that I loved always, again, being with the pre-K and kindergarten students is some days when I had a little bit of break in between school and then going to the club, um, they would have gym class. And so they would have gym class in between the school and the convent. And I would walk out of the convent and then this whole group of kids would all come run over and give me a giant hug and be so excited. Be like, Miss Marguerite, Miss Marguerite. And just kind of tackle me a little bit. But they were so excited to see me, even though they had seen me like an hour before. It was like every time, huge smiles and a hug or high five or fist bump or whatever. Um, and that just made me feel, I don't know, those little moments, you're so like, wow, this is amazing and so blessed um, to have people so excited to see you. Yeah. That's, a, that's, that's definitely a blessing, but it's because how you were with them, how you were loving and caring with them. Now, talking about the, the company, accompaniment, how did we as a solutions accompany you during this year? What was the schedule, the structure? I mean, how did, it, how did we accompany you? Um, there were a lot of steps where I had different meetings and um, kind of like check-in times, I guess, times for reflection with the sisters, with the people that I worked at school with, and as well as the people that I worked at with the center, like UJC. Um, I talked a lot with Miriam as well, um, Christina. And it was, it was like, even when it wasn't scheduled meeting time to reflect and focus on how I wanted to grow, um, I never felt like I couldn't just come up and 
address a concern if it was a good time you know it was like never like oh we don't have a meeting scheduled we can't talk about that um I was always well received with any concern that I had or anything like that and so I think just being open to hearing me first and then and then addressing whatever I was thinking about um it really made me feel like able to move forward in what I was doing um it really just made me feel like okay they're there with me they're there to help me yeah nice I think if nice. that answers your question thank you yes so, yes it does thank you uh I have two more questions per se number one is what did you learn from living with the sisters mm, okay so some people like most people in community life they struggle to be patient with each other I did not really have that as an issue because um, the sisters that I lived with, I mean, I'm sure they were very patient with me, but I never got frustrated with them. They were so just um, gracious and um, generous and great listeners and honestly so amazing. Like I can't even put it into words. Something I learned, um, I learned to love God in different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, and just learning how to trust God by their example and the way that they have trusted God um, in so many different seasons of their lives. That is something I really learned from them. They gave me a really great example of that, um, how to approach difficult situations and also just how to really tackle um, Salesian spirituality and Salesian approaches with the kids and Yeah, I learned all of this from them, learned so many things. I mean, some practical things too, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, best cleaning practices for different things or, I don't know, decoration things We I got to help with. Um, yeah. Nice. But I think what they taught me most was how to love God in different ways. Nice. That's so beautiful. And, uh, and the other question is, what is something that you think you have gained from this experience now that it's over and things like that what do you think is something that you have gained from this experience um i think really learning i mean everybody's selfish even if you're constantly working not to be selfish you're still we're naturally turn like um geared to think of ourselves first and i think really learning and putting it into practice to try and put other people's other people before ourselves um is something I got to practice a lot, um, something I gained, really putting that into practice in different ways, um, learning how to communicate with different people, learning how to communicate in different styles, in effective ways, um, with so many different age groups. Um, and yeah, just really how to be at peace amidst um, a kind of, a chaotic situation, I guess, with dealing with a lot, um, just how to keep approaching people and situations with peace. Um, I think I've gained all those things and a lot of self-confidence in my own abilities. Um, and yeah, not to be afraid to step out of my comfort zone even more than I already have constantly being pushed to do that. Yeah. Nice. There's definitely more, but I can't. <laughs> no, I can't those are good. And the last question, what would you say to a high schooler who's finishing high school or a teenager who's thinking about becoming a volunteer, even an adult? What would you tell them? How mm -hmm. would you invite them? I would say, honestly, I think a lot of times we're taught to work ourselves up over these big decisions and life-changing decisions and everything and afraid that we're going to to mess it up or it will be the wrong decision and it's like because sometimes you're choosing between two good things but it's you also have to remember that you have to look at okay examine what are you looking to get out of it what do you desire but also not be afraid to push yourself to challenge yourself um, volunteer experience a lot of times you think so much about where you're going the other people you're going to be working with but a lot of it is also what you're going through and processing and experiencing. Um, and I would just encourage anyone who is considering 
um, any experience where it puts them out of their comfort zone, whether it be big or small, doing volunteer work, or maybe just helping out a soup kitchen for a day just to do it because then it's like, I don't know, what do you have to lose? You may have found something that is so much more worth anything than you could have lost. So just don't be afraid. Really jump in because the chances are if it doesn't end up working out, you're not going to be stuck in this situation. You're not going to be – it's not the end-all be-all. Yeah. So just don't overthink it and get out there. <laughs> And actually, yeah. if, even if you don't like it, you will learn. But I have to say something. I mean, part of the reason why for you has been a good experience as well is because your openness. You know, you 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 were open to be a coach. You were out open to be a company. You were open to mm -hmm. walk with me or work with the people who were a company at that time. And that has made a huge difference because, in a sense, you have been able to to be, in a sense, guided in the process. Um, thank mm -hmm. you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for giving one year of your life to serve God and to serve God through the solutions. And uh, I hope we continue talking and I hope we continue recruiting more people that we can keep mm -hmm. uh, showing them the missions. Good luck with your studies. I know you're going back to university. I know you are going, mm -hmm. you're excited. You actually were applying while you were in the process, uh, in the volunteer. Yeah. So. Good luck to do to you and uh, you have all our prayers. Thank you. Thank you so much, okay. JC. Yeah. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you. <laughs> bye. Bye bye.